still morning, so good morning to all of you. It's, uh, it's wonderful to be here in your presence. Gracious host of the program, Ms. Sinti Sinha Jameer, respected principals of Badalari College and People's College, Dr. Ayurva Jayuchen and Dr. Amanullah Mukumar, representatives and participants of the RKM, and soon, I want to be here, the Fazadali College, Tuli College, People's College, and the Jubilee College students who are here. Fellow participants in the program, Mr. Volkov, Vice President of the EU of the Fazadali College, Wap Al-Sunla, the gem of the college students' confluence, Sushi Sangla, President of UPC, and the esteemed members of the Moto Industry College Students Confluence under the leadership of the convener, Mr. Asenso, and my dear young friends. I am truly honored to be here to stand before you and, uh, you know, be felicitated. As an old, retired man, we don't get much chance to attend such programs, and I am really grateful that I have been invited here. Initially, being on the 1st of April, I thought that it could be uh, a April Fool's prank. But then coming here and seeing the wonderful arrangements that have been made, so creatively made, so colorfully done up, I am truly impressed <coughs> that the Mokotun district has such an organization known as the College Students Confluence of the District and that it acts as an interface among the college students. And this interface, this interchange, and this interaction amongst you of sharing of concepts and ideas, I'm sure will go a long way in uplifting not only your education system, but the people of the district. I have especially been impressed by the fact that you have chosen the theme Meraki. Initially, I thought that Meraki was uh, an outward Meraki. But then, Mr. Asunsor, the convener, had uh, explained to me that it is a Greek word. And I had Googled the uh, word in the computer, which everybody does these days when we don't understand things. And I was surprised that it has linkage to Italian, Sanskrit, Hebrew, Japanese, and Chinese words, Meraki. And that is an extraordinary word to describe and approach to doing things with passion or with all the heart. Something done with one's soul, with creativity, effort, and a lot of love. I think that is a very, very important and essential need in society today, especially among the youth to grow. We should remember that this is God's gift to man, because God created man that way. When God created the world, God said, and he observed that it was good. Every day of the week that he created something new, of life, of earth, of soil, the sea, the waters, he saw and said that it was good. It means that he felt. And that feeling is what is expressed in this word, Maraki. Unless you have feelings, whether you are in your studies, or in the sports that you play, or in the various activities that you participate in, unless you do it with feelings, Unless you have a care and concern for the smaller, the big things of whatever work and job that you are after, you are in, things don't work out. And I'm grateful that this conference for the current year have adopted this theme, Meraki, and I hope that the student community will grow up with this in mind. With that little thought of the theme of the confluence, I just thought that I would share with you a few 
thoughts and thinkings which are in my mind and which is going to affect you personally, the youth of Nagaland in the near future. And in very brief, although I didn't uh, talk long, I'll try to make it as brief as possible. I want to share a few things where you can apply your concepts of Meraki and see in what way you can improve the society that we live in. The, I call it the imperatives, the must be attended to subjects in Nagaland today. The first is the idea of Nagaland. I am happy that the principal has explained there are, there are students from all over Nagaland. People from Mong, Winsan, Long Lane, you name it. Kifri, Wokcho, I've seen a boy from Kohima playing the guitar with his uh, jacket. There are people from all over Nagaland. But I'm sorry to say, state that the idea of Nagaland is getting fractured. And we have to be careful. And this I'm sharing with the young generation because it affects you. We have had the Eastern Nagaland people demanding statehood. We have the CNDC clamoring in the last election. We have the Tenyeme organization, the Southern Nagaland. Everybody is talking only in terms of fracturing Nagaland, either for their own the compulsions or for the thoughts that they believe in. But I'm telling you that this is not good and not right for the moment. If we don't have Nagaland, if Nagaland does not exist, we will have nowhere to go. We have nowhere that we can call a home excepting these hills. And when we think of it, we the tribals were very less in number. Of course, the government of India was gracious enough to have given us a state in 1963, comprising only of 3,64,000. Today, we have become 20 lakhs, about 20 lakhs. And still, that 20 lakhs is very small compared to the seven. 0.7 billion, 7,700 million people of this earth. We the owls, we are hardly 1,94,622 in number. That's just for the 2011 census. There are tribes which are only 40 to 50,000 in number. And if we keep on fracturing and dividing and, you know, going our own way all the time without thought of how to stay together, where will we as a people survive? We should think sometimes in becoming bigger, in getting the Tirap, the Changlang, and the other districts included in Nagaland, in fact. The southern Nagaland already, the people are talking of including them. We should think of terms of our bro Laga brothers who are in Myanmar. We should think in bigger terms of getting together if only in that way we can survive as a people. There are points which are dealt with. But we are fortunate. And it is time that we change that. We should develop Meraki. We should have more understanding amongst ourselves. We should have more love and affection among the tribes. Our fathers, my fathers, let us say, your grandfathers and your forefathers, they have been to all the places in Eastern Nagaland as teachers and as preachers. And that's how the idea of Nagaland has grown. But that is being discarded to me. And I sincerely appeal to the students that you have capacity in you when you talk of Meraki to hold Nagaland state together. And I hope that you will truly understand the meaning of what I am saying and that, and that you will build up.
of this theme or the idea of Nagaland, of Nagaland as a state. Then the second imperative that I want to talk about is imperatives of identity and competition. We are faced with the aspect of globalization, which in simple cultural terms of clothes, food, lifestyle, media, means of communication, movement and transport. All these factors are overwhelmed like a principle of people's policy. As I said earlier, it affects all of us. Look at the way we dress and live. When we look at our young boys and girls on the streets, we cannot differentiate them from people in Korea and Japan. But when we talk of economy and technology, it is quite another matter. We are literally swamped by the multinational corporations, their products, right from vehicles like Toyotas and Suzuki's of Japan, to American vehicles like Jeeps and all other technologies which is available today in Nagaland. And we have the systems, communication systems like the mobile phones, I don't need to say, the broadband, the computers, the DTH has reached every nook and corner of our lives. And in the process of modernization, we have already lost for the bit of our tribal identity and we got our spirit of competition and survival. <coughs> Identity is what God has given us. God has called himself Jehovah. I am who I am. And that's what we are. But when we lose sense of identity, we forget ourselves. And when we forget about ourselves, we have no sense of competition. And when we lose our sense of competition, we lose our sense of survival. Today is a, we are living in a flat world. Flat, not in the geographical terms of the round globe that nobody disputes. But we have the equality of opportunities, whether we live in New York or Tokyo or London or in Mokokcho, we have equal access to the internet, we have equal access to the telephone, we have equal access to the television, to the vehicles, automobiles. And therefore, we have equal opportunities. And yet, if we lose our identity, if we lose the competitive spirit, we will fail to survive. And that is something which you, the young people, have to get into your minds. You have to compete. You are competing not just amongst yourselves, but as I've said, you are competing with the people in Japan. Tokyo, in London, Washington, New York. You have the same, they have the same opportunities as you have. But where are they and where are you? Where are you? Let us think seriously about this concept, this idea of the new form. The, the, the competitive spirit and the survival instinct to grow the right for us. Remember, today particularly, the instinct of survival of the fittest rules the world even today. It's not among the, only the wild, in the, the jungle that the principle exists. And in this survival of the fittest, unless we, the students of Mokokcho, become the best, the fittest, you will not find it possible to survive in this world. From there, to survive, we have to have the best of facilities. We need the amenities which people of another parts of the world have. And therefore, when we think of the facilities, the amenities, yes, the government is trying to provide the best possible amenities, but yet, there are many things which are lacking. And here we have to think in terms of the form of government that we have. And there we have the imperatives of reforms. A long time ago, there was a story of Mr. T. M. Paul. You will not have heard his name. 
He was the foreign secretary two times of India, and he was instrumental in drafting the punch scheme of China. And Mr. Tian Kaur, when he was approached with the question of Kashmir and Nagaland, that was in the 60s, and our venerated old man, Mr. A.C. Jamil, knows his story very well. When he was asked about the problem of Kashmir and Nagaland, he said, Nagaland, it's all right. No, no problem. You give them lots of money and you give them lots of alcohol. And the problem is solved. And that is exactly what is happening today. Our own leader, Mr. A.Z. Tiso, recently on the social media WhatsApp, we have seen what he has observed about money, that ultimately we shall be defeated and enslaved only by money, not by the spirit of freedom. And all these things are happening today. We need to think and ponder very deeply about India's open, blatant policy of divided rule, ENP, statehood, rest of Nagaland, and where shall we go? And we keep breaking further and further into small, small, small tribes, as I mentioned earlier, our Article 371A may go, will go, unless we have a state, and that will be the end of Naga culture that we so proudly talk about. So now, we need reforms. There is a general feeling that in the last election, the ardent plea of the church and the movement of right-thinking people for a clean election was not successful. Now this has great implications upon the future. The use of money for power is something which will destroy the whole foundation of where your life will be built. On the other hand, we have elected with money people who have changed you know, parties overnight. Actually, I was also thinking, I was also in politics. I had started the National uh, Nationalist Democratic Progressive Party. Once I was not given a ticket, I was in a quandary and I decided not to enter, enter the elections. Some people have said that that is a, that is a really wrong step. But I could not imagine myself as an old man changing an ideology or a party overnight. I could also think in terms of entering as an independent because if I have to enter politics, enter the assembly, it has to be with the aim to change Nagaland and what could I do if I was sitting there all alone. That was some of the imperatives which I felt and therefore I have decided not to enter the elections. People are still questioning it, and I hope I'm right. But we have people who do not think and have accepted parties overnight. LJP, NCP, NPP, all those things. They have been elected, they have come to the assembly, and today they are talking of an opposition to this government which actually does not make sense in a democracy. In a democracy, there has to be dissent. There have to be the voices which shall, should point out the wrongdoings of the government and you know, move together. Those processes has to be a part of democracy. On the other hand, the people that we have elected, they are talking about opposition to the government. They cannot stay even one day in the opposition. They want to be part of the government to share the budget and the money. So this is some conception and ideas which we need to think about and change urgently. The happening to a people who had wanted to live in an idyllic village republic our Naga people have lived in the ideal village republic that listened to the voice of the poor, cared for the needy, and at the same time lived as valiant warriors. 
men bound by rules, and each had freedom to be heard and be sent was a right. Putumandan existed to maintain order, but at the same time stood for the rights of the individual and the poorest of the society. Truth was honored, value was respected, life was precious, and coexistence of society was at the core of living. Forceful deprivation of property and rights were unknown. Where has that Subhadeva disappeared to you? This is a question which you, the young people, have to think seriously. You are at a college level. You are at a right age when you have to raise questions, when you have to ask and when you have to realize what is good and right wrong for you. And I'm glad that you have got a theme like Marathi. And I'm sure with this kind of beginning, I have been encouraged to pick up some of the subjects to share with you today. And I hope that we can wander on it today. So coming to the issue of reforms. I am sure many of you have heard about the situation in Mizoram. There is the Young Mizo Association. And that organization and that association is fixed in every village in every town and city. And they ensure that there are no practices and no use of wealth in the election. Whatever issues are there, they elect the right government and the right people. Why is it not possible that the young people of Nagaland also, and if not Nagaland, at least a district like Mokokti, why can't the young men and women come together to form an organization? We have the ATM, the powerful student body. Everybody listens to you. The politicians are afraid of you. Why can you not form an association like the young people association with the teacher and say, please? Hold hands with the church. There will be older generation people who will be willing to fund such a movement as you move from town to town and grasp the concept. But this has to be done without a rational election system to elect the government of our choice. You and I, we are doomed. The hours are doomed. The Naga people are doomed if we elect a government that is based only on money and power. Let us think carefully. That is the first aspect of reform which I would like you all to think carefully. The second aspect is that to use the technology appropriately. Today we have at our disposal sufficient knowledge and technology to ensure the Aadhaar card, which you all have, linked with the EPIC election photo identity card, and for them to be merged together so that the voting machine can be opened by the biometrics of the voter concern. I hope you understand the electric voting machine which once it is open, somebody it can be done. It can be stand by, by, by those, a few persons and the whole vote is taken by, by proxy or boot capture. <coughs> but if we can ensure the system by the use of technology for only the right person to come and by his biometrics, I mean the fingerprints and the iris, which is already recorded in the Aadhaar card, to open that machine and be able to vote, it will ensure that the greatest man and the smallest man are equated. Let us try. We can make an appeal to the government and this technology is possible to be brought in place currently. These are the reforms that we need. Let us apply our minds to move for such kind of reforms and I've been here, we are happy that the ATM Mundang is here, I've mentioned about them, I've mentioned about the 
power and the force that lies in the youth today. And I'm sure that with the reforms led by the youth, for your own future, Nagaland will change, Mobutu district will change, and your lives will change. The fourth imperative that I'm talking is the imperative of technology. The other day, I was just browsing through my telephone, and uh, it's the, the thing, you know, chat GPT, the artificial intelligence. So I was just chatting with it, and I asked where is, uh, what about E.W. Clark? So he gave a wrong information saying that he, was, he came in 18 something. So I said, no, if your, if, if your information is wrong, Clark came to India in 1869, he came to Nagaland in 1872, he trusted the how by how the dictionary, not the Angami dictionary. Then immediately the AI responded saying he apologized and he corrected himself. So it was as if I was talking to a living human being. Artificial intelligence. Talking to you, you know, to me and to you. Now artificial intelligence is not just you know chatting with somebody who is there on the phone or in the, in the computer. If you have been using the YouTube and you access certain programs with more often than some other programs, then the information is collected from your mobile, harvested and the algorithm made so that in the future only the programs or the programs which you like are given back to you on the telephone. Have you noticed that? That is one of the great algorithms of the artificial intelligence going on in the world around you and we are simply being swallowed by that. There is a thought that the Chinese TikTok, I'm sure many of you have opened this chat uh, device, has been designed by the Chinese, specially directed with the algorithm to affect the decadent American society, to make the youth waste more time on the computer, on the mobile phone. And that's how the TikTok has come into being. That's one of the uh, research has brought it out, and they're talking in terms of algorithms to control each other's society. India is controlling China, controlling America, controlling Russia. That's how far artificial intelligence has gone. B is God's nature in man and his greatest gift to us. Love is what makes us understand the deep mysteries of the universe that God has created and what differentiates us from other creations. Love is also what makes Christianity different from other religions. If we talk of the Big Bang, when the universe began, we have God saying, let the light. If we talk of the mysteries of the universe, the size and the speed, at which we move and we have Einstein's theory of relativity, we are left in awesome wonder of the God who created time. If we talk of the speed of computers and matter and AI, we can only think of the creator who created the quanta of the radiation and energy leading to the quantum computers. We are indeed left in all the problems, but you and I will do, and that we should continue to lay, live on the principles laid down in the Bible, of which the greatest of this is love. And based on this, I wish to walk through the street for the students' conference. All the best in your endeavors. May God bless you. Thank you very much.